Hello, and welcome to Nothing Ever Happens in Canada, and I'm Canadian Girl. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to look at a very interesting building. A building with two horned creatures guarding its front door, a room with an acoustic secret, Egyptian hieroglyphs on its roof. This building is said to be a Masonic temple hidden in plain sight at 450 Broadway in Winnipeg, Manitoba. This building is the Manitoba Legislator Building. Join me now as we jump into Episode 3, The Freemasons and the Manitoba Legislative Building. Let's start with the Freemasons. Who were they? They are a brotherhood described by themselves as a beautiful system of morality veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. They were skilled masons and left symbols leaving hidden meanings regarding politics and religion in their work. In their eyes, God was the great architect of the universe. Their craft was based around this thinking. If you could mimic what God had done in nature, it would bring positive energy to what you were creating and all who entered the space. God and geometry were very important elements to the Freemasons. The G is the center of one of their most iconic symbols. This iconic symbol can be seen at the Prince of Wales Fort near Church Hill, Manitoba, along the Church Hill River, located at the river's mouth. It is the oldest Masonic symbol in Manitoba. It is etched on a brick of the fort somewhere between 1731 and 1772. The fort was built by the Hudson's Bay Company stone masons. In the Winnipeg area and the Red River Colony, they were said to be flooded with Freemasons. Up until 1967, it was hard to find a businessman or member of parliament in the area that wasn't one of them. Now let's get to this building. It's 1911 and the Manitoba government throws a contest stating that it's open to all architects in the British Empire. The objective? Design the new Manitoba Parliament Building in Winnipeg. This was its original name, not like legislative like it is today. The prize? $10,000 for the best design. Today, this would be about $260,000. They received 67 entries, and the winner, a fine arts student named Frank Worthington Simon. He was said to be a British genius. He believed in Freemasonry and the Hermetic philosophy. Side note, Simon was also chosen the winner by fellow Freemasons, premier at the time, Rodman Roblin and his Ministry of Public Works. It's 1913, and construction on the Masonic Temple begins. <gasps> Sorry, I mean the legislative building. This building is located at 450 Broadway in Winnipeg, the geological center of North America. That's right, no matter which way you're heading, Coming from North America, Winnipeg is dead center. And who did they say liked geometry again? Let's keep going. The stone masons worked for 12 to 14 hours a day at 35 cents an hour. What they built was a 253 foot tall, 250,000 square foot letter H shaped building on 30 acres of land. Throughout the building, the golden ratio, sacred geometry, and the Fibonacci sequence will be placed. The numbers 5, 8, 
and 13 can be found in every room. These numbers relate to the Fibonacci sequence. 666 can be found often as well. In this case, 666 is said to represent the sun. There is 36 constellations. If you add up 1 through 36, you will get 666, the sun, the power of life. Back when the building was being built, the signs and symbols would have been recognized. Nowadays, this is like a lost language. In 2014, the government expressed its concerns for the status of the building and its deterioration. Today, we could not rebuild this iconic temple as the cost would be too high it was built for $1 million back then. Nowadays, it would be around $1 billion to reproduce. And sadly, we lack the skilled stonemasons, talented enough to make the work of art like this today. Some notable Masonic signs to look for in your own neighborhood. The all-seeing eye, or the eye of God, he will see your work the anchor, or the ark. The anchor is said to represent immortality, the ark, the journey, or a life well spent. The ark of the covenant, alchemy, which is the manipulation of metals, an old Egyptian art, a beehive, which is said to represent industry, the blazing star, historical highest peak of knowledge, sun, mercury, Cyrus, present in all Masonic temples. The moon represents wisdom and conduct, a compass to keep bonds and follow measure, Corn, wheat, and oil all represent wages. The holiest of holies present in all temples. A sacred room, 20 by 20 cubits, off limits to most. An hourglass, a passage of time. Number seven, seven days to create the earth. A symbol of completion. Look around in your own town at old stone buildings. You just might find the next great Canadian treasure. Go ahead, take a look. Let me know what you find. Famous today, not for its Masonic features, but for things like its golden boy, a bronze statue covered in 23.7 karat gold leaf. He was introduced in 1919 as the eternal youth. Standing on one foot, he is 17 feet tall. He has a torch in one hand and wheat in the other. He stands perched on top of the copper dome and looks north onto the city. According to Dr. Frank Albo, who I will tell you more about later, he believes this is Hermes, son of Zeus, a Greek god, and not just some golden boy, like the newspapers claimed him to be. Hermes, guided souls, knew secrets of the world. He liked alchemy, numerology, and astrology. Hermes, or the Golden Boy statue, stands above the copper dome roof, which below it has four groups of four elements. This is seen as him unifying these elements, which is the art of alchemy. Therefore, this is Hermes, 
the Greek god, not just some golden boy. The four elements were sculpted into four groups of three. The figures were life-size representations of people. They stood right below Hermes, outside the edges of the copper dome roof. These groups of sculptures represented agriculture, art, industry, science, or some say earth, water, wind, fire. But first, let's go back to the front doors, because after seven years, that's right, after seven years, because that's a sign of completion, we know that, the doors are finally opening. It's July 1920, and the Manitoba Legislative Building is open. It's Manitoba's 50th anniversary, and the planets Mercury and Venus are superimposed on one another in the northern Winnipeg sky that night. The Freemasons believed in aligning things with celestial events. It was known as, as above, so below. They liked to mirror the sky, just like the Egyptians did. They liked to draw off the power of God and believe that architecture could heal the soul. But wait, before we go inside, let's take one last look up at the rooftop. Take a good look. That's exactly what Dr. Frank Albo did, architect historian, and if it weren't for him, we would not have these secrets that we have now. They would have stayed lost for who knows how long. I will tell you more about him in a minute. So did you look up? Did you see those two Egyptian Sphinx up there? Two Egyptian Sphinx sit on top of the Manitoba Legislative Building. But why? One faces east to the sunrise. One faces west to the sunset. The even more interesting part is hieroglyphs, right under the Sphinx's chin. Now you can't see them right from the ground, so I'll read them. And thanks to Dr. Albo, we know what they say. There is a symbol of Thutmose III, a pharaoh who lived 3,500 years ago. He is widely believed to be the father of Freemasonry. The hieroglyphs read, the everlasting manifestation of the sun god Ra, the good god who gives life. The two sphinx can be seen sitting just below the four elements and the golden boy. Now let's go inside. Welcome to the Grand Staircase, or the Room of Protection, whichever you prefer. First, you are greeted by two life-size horned creatures guarding the entrance, the Bisons of Manitoba, made of bronze by artists known as George Gardet. He is also the creator of Hermes, the Golden Boy. At 13 feet long, and two and a half tons each. Legend says to get the giant bisons inside the building, the entrance was flooded with water, then frozen, and the bisons were slid into place. The bisons, said to be lucky and ward off evil, sacred horn bulls are known to guard temples throughout history. Prime example, King Solomon's temple had golden bulls at the entrance, guarding. So are these just Manitoba buffalo? Or are they something more, considering all that you know? Other items that can be found in the room offering protection, 14 lion heads adorn the trim around the ceiling. 
There is also eight cattle skulls. The goddess Athena and Medusa are facing each other across the room. All these symbols are known to be lucky, ward off evil. The sun also enters the room through the glass ceiling at strategic angles to recharge each of the protectants. The room measures 66.6 feet length by width. The power of the sun, 666. You walk in between the two life-size bisons up three flights of stairs with 13 steps each. The marble stairs are the finest in the world known as Brown Vein Carrera. Once at the top, you walk through two pillars and enter a room known as the Rotonda. The floors are marble and surrounded by a tesselled border. There is a circular altar towards the middle of the room and the roof is dome shaped and sitting on top of that dome perfectly in line with the altar, Hermes, our golden boy. Beneath the dome and directly below Hermes, as you look down the circular altar is a black eight-pointed Masonic star on the floor. This room is known as the Pool of the Black Star. The Black Star is 13 feet across exactly. That's right, the number 13 again. The Black Star Room has an acoustic secret built right in it as well. Something known to be Egyptian in origin and something the Freemasons favorited as well. If you talk in the room in a normal voice, it will echo throughout the room. If you stand directly on the black star and whisper your darkest secrets, everyone around you will hear them loud and clear. Directly across the hall, in line with the black star, the holiest of holies, the Lieutenant Governor's Reception Room. Off limits to the public and covered in beautiful walnut wood from floor to ceiling. Something is up with this building. It's not like others for sure. Side note, just like in Solomon's Temple, the first holy temple recorded, a room 20 by 20 cubits made of solid gold and housing the Ark of the Covenant guarded by two feathered creatures under a blue veil and off limits to all. Solomon's temple was built in seven years. Hmm, we know another temple that took seven years to build. Solomon's temple stood for 410 years. Back to the lieutenant governor's room. It does not have solid gold walls, but walnut. It does measure 20 by 20 cubits. There is a blue veil directly over the window and above that veil, as opposed to under it, is the Ark of the Covenant guarded by a native and British warrior, both adorned with feathers, said to be guarding a war chest measuring 2.5 cubits long by 1.5 cubits tall and wide exactly the same as the Ark. Is it a war chest or is it the Ark of the Covenant? Side note, Dr. Frank Albo has made many requests to have this chest open and they have all been denied. More notable Masonic imagery found throughout the building include an iconic lamp with 12 round bulbs surrounding one large center bulb said to be Jesus and his disciples or the 12 planets surrounding the sun. A mural painted in the Rantanda room 
that looks down at the black star depicts a war scene of a man in white robes with a bare chest and is said to look like Jesus. And above him, in the background of the painting, is said to be the Mother Mary. Back outside, on the upper north part of the building, in a triangular part, it depicts Lady Manitoba. But she has a striking resemblance to the fertility goddess, Ashan. Remember the numbers 5, 8, and 13 from the Fibonacci sequence? Let's start with the number 5. There were five styles of columns used throughout the building. There are five rooms featuring known Masonic plants like olives, leaves, and rosettes. The fifth musical octave can be reached in the black star room. There are five rosettes running up each side of the great dome. Now let's go to eight. The black star has eight triangle points. All the rosettes have eight petals. The entire building is shaped like the letter H, which is the eighth letter of the alphabet. And 13? There are three sets of 13 stairs in the grand entrance. There are 13 lights in every hallway. There are 13 media seats above the speaker's chair in the house. The bisons are 13 feet long and the black star is 13 feet across. So what does a Masonic temple need to have? It has three requirements. A mosaic pavement, an indented tessel border, and the blazing star. The rotunda room located in the Manitoba Legislator Building has all three of these requirements and many more. If you want to know more about this amazing story and dive deeper into the facts, I suggest you look up Dr. Frank Albo, architecture historian. I will of course include a link down below. He is the genius who put all these clues together and studied the Manitoba legislator for 10 years after looking up one day and questioning why there was an Egyptian sphinx on the roof. Dr. Alva was granted something called carte blanche, I'm probably saying this wrong, allowing him to access day or night, roof, basement, wherever he wanted to go by the premier of the province so he could study the building. He took full advantage of this opportunity. It said that one night he almost fell off the rooftop in his PJs while checking on a hunch he had. Ever since Dr. Albo has brought this to the public's attention, many people who worked in the buildings for years had never even noticed this themselves. If you're ever in the area, I highly recommend his tour. I haven't personally been on it, but I have not read a bad review. And if I am ever in the area, I will definitely be going on this tour. From April to October, on Wednesday nights, for about $40 a person, you can get a tour from Dr. Frank Albo himself. Now I think that's pretty neat. I'll include a link down below for his tours. Also, make sure you book with them and not just the regular tour through the Manitoba Legislative Building. I've heard that tour is not so interesting. The tour by Dr. Albo is said to be about 90 minutes. A small portion is outside 
so dress accordingly, as this is Canada. If you do go on this tour, please let me know. I'd love to hear about your experience. Well, I hope you enjoyed my third podcast here at Nothing Ever Happens in Canada. That was sure an interesting building, and I learned a lot of things. You can follow me at Nothing Canada on Instagram and Twitter. I'd love to hear your feedback. You can also contact me at CanadianGirl2319 at gmail.com. I will include it all in the show notes below. Thanks for listening. I'm Canadian Girl. I'd like to thank Anchor. We made it to my third episode. And thanks to this great app, it's been a very easy experience. If you're looking to start a podcast, I highly recommend downloading this app. I'd like to recommend a podcast, Up and Vanished. If you haven't heard of it, I definitely recommend you listen to it. If you're a fan of the unsolved crime drama, this is a podcast for you. I'm going to leave it there, as many of you have probably heard it before. But it is a great podcast if you have not. It's by Payne Lindsay, and again it's called Up and Vanish. I'll include it down below. Thanks again for listening all the way to the very end. It truly means the world to me. I'm Canadian Girl. Until next time. We have a support button now. If you want to help this podcast out because you think it's rad, follow the first link in the show notes below. The rest is up to you. If you want to help in an even bigger way, you can do that by leaving a shiny five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you can't do that, like or comment on your podcast app if that's available. All these little things help this podcast move around in the podcast charts so we can meet more awesome fans like you. And if you don't know what to say, just say hi. I'll say hi right back.